Hey everyone, welcome back to Goblins 3. Last time, we died! Literally, thrown to the wolves and eaten. Now we're in darkness. But Blount at least has something to write about it. Yeah, he wasn't quite left that mangled in this version. But back to nothing but darkness. There's stuff to find in here if you just randomly move the cursor around a little bit. We didn't get to keep any of our inventory, so we're going to have to pick up some new stuff, starting with these matches. Yeah, they're really into physical comedy with this one. But we've got matches. Unfortunately, we're going to have to find something to illuminate with them. These rough areas around the room are what we need. And yeah, we get a little preview of what's to come in this area. The next one's actually up in the upper left. And fortunately, aside from smacking his face on that beam, Blount can navigate perfectly in the darkness. So the next one's a little over to the right. And the final one is just here. This is the only one you actually need. And the whole room is lit up at last. We dropped our match into a bowl that we can't do anything with, but we can grab that ladle hanging on it. That's going to be important later on. <laughs> Meanwhile, let's check out the stuff that we found earlier. Now that we can see it, we're not scared. To get white, I must throw three will-o'-the-wisps into the bowl. And that's going to be our mission for this room. Get the three will-o'-wisps, which live in these little dens. Oh. Oh. But we can't just pry them open with our hands, we're going to need a sharp tool. Okay, it's just part of a tool, but it's enough. So now this yellow will-o'-wisp is floating around this pirate but we can't actually do anything with it. And he won't relinquish the bottle. He does have a wooden uh, leg. Uh, can't do much with that yet, but... Let's open up this... Well... Yeah, let's go ahead. Be a bit malicious. So the wisp is attracted to the fire. Oh. Oh. But we can't just reach in and grab it. So now I'm going to go ahead and check out the other will o wisp den on the screen here. And this one just kind of floats around this pedestal. we don't have anything to put on it, so we'll check out the other half of the room. There's the final wisps den. We need three, and we've seen a red one and a yellow one, so the last one is naturally going to be... Chartreuse! No, I'm just kidding, it's blue. And this one just floats around that skull over there. All right, well, that was easy. We trapped it. Regrettably, it's just going to pop out the eye socket. 
So we're going to have to find a way to block that eye socket. And just over to the left on this hanging dummy is a pair of spectacles. Alright, so it's got a squirty flower. I know how to deal with this. We'll need to cut that tube. And now we can take our spectacles. And we can also pick up the leftover water. There's also this mirror here. This mirror is attached to a mechanism. I must find how it works. Well, we'll be able to take care of all of that later. One more thing to look at down here. There's a message written in blood. A reference to Goblins 2. This has been written with blood. It is still fresh. Well, if it's fresh, we can scoop it up with our ladle. I don't know why we want to do that, but now we've got a ladle full of blood. And we saw this tombstone earlier. I have the unpleasant feeling they want me to think I'm dead. It's right out of Alone in the Dark 3. So, let's see what we can do about these will-o'-wisps. If we put the spectacles on the skull, it should block the eye sockets. And now we just have to open the skull and trap the wisp inside. And as for that yellow wisp, we'll deal with that once we put the blue wisp into the bowl. Now that ghost down there wasn't there before. See, every time you put a wisp into the bowl, the color changes, and depending on what color the screen is, certain other things might appear. And we'll need to interact with at least some of them to get out of this room. The red, yellow, and blue will of the wisp together are not enough. That's weird. I need three wisps. But the three that are in the room aren't enough? The red, yellow, and blue will of the wisp together are not enough. Okay, so he's not going to elaborate on what he means by that. We'll have to figure out what other ingredient we need. Meanwhile, we have water with which we can put out the fire that the yellow wisp is hovering in. And that should allow us to grab it. And that's actually the only time you'll be able to interact directly with a Will-O-Wisp. So let's go ahead and shove this one in the bowl, too. Blue plus yellow makes green, and now we've got a hand over on the left. The blue ghost is gone, because we're not strictly blue anymore. It's a mushroom that has grown on the green hand. Looks like a cork. Well, I'm sure a cork will come in handy eventually. But now... We still can't get the red wisp. We need to get these wisps back out of the bowl. I can remove the will-o'-the-wisp from the bowl using the ladle. Ah, right. But the ladle is currently full of blood, so I can't use it to get the wisps out of the bowl. We're gonna have to put the blood into another container. Ah, that's right, the pirate's holding a bottle. Seems he didn't like that very much. But that's okay, because now we can get the bottle. And the ladle is empty. And the pirate's just a pirate now. Big boom. 
but he's still not happy with us. Alright, in the meantime, we can now pull the wisps back out of the bowl. We've seen what the world looks like in blue and green, but let's turn it yellow. And it doesn't look like anything appeared, but if you look at the message in blood down there, the O that was already yellow is sticking out of the wall. It's a button. And that's how we release the mirror. And just in case you're wondering, yeah, if we look into the mirror again, we'll still see the skull. But we now have what we need to trap the Red Wisp. Not that we actually needed the mirror, but we got a bottle that we can set on the pedestal, and it's full of blood, which is red, so the Red Wisp should be attracted to it. Now if we just grab it, obviously the Wisp pops out. We need to block the opening, like we did with the skull. And this time, we've got something that perfectly fits into the bottle. A cork. So you have to get both the blue and yellow wisps before you can get the cork that you used to trap the red one. And I'll go ahead and drop this guy in the bowl, which will turn everything orange. Now as far as I know, nothing actually appears. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a carrot on the skull. No, wait a second. That, that's just the spectacles. Yeah, nothing orange appears here. Which is a little disappointing, but I can't think of anything else that we need. So we'll just go ahead and drop the blue wisp into the bowl, and we'll have all three of them. I must find a way to make this ray come back into the bowl! So that's what the blue ghost meant. Not only do we have to put all three wisps into the bowl, but we have to make that ray bounce back. So let me go ahead and pull the wisps out. You gotta click carefully. And in red, we get a one-fanged vampire on the wall. The ray of light must bounce three times and come back into the bowl. So that's our real mission here. We've got to find three things for that ray of light to bounce on. And also have your other tooth, buddy. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's one of the things the ray is going to bounce against. And our final color is purple, where we see this little skull ghost over here. It could be used as support to make the ray bounce. So we need to put something reflective on it. And we've got spectacles that he can wear. And as you notice, the red vampire is still in the room, even though it's not red anymore. Once you've put something on one of these colored things, it'll remain where it is. And that hand is right where the ray went the first time. If we look at it again... It could be used as support to make the ray bounce! Yeah, this is the third thing the ray's gotta bounce on. And we'll just have it hold the mirror. So that's three things for the ray to bounce on. I could have done it one step at a time, but... Let's save time. We know it needs to bounce thrice. We've got three reflective surfaces. And there we have it. After being delirious for three days, I was slowly regaining consciousness in a soft bed. I was saved. 
dear unknown. Thanks for helping me escape from King Bod. You really made him mad. We are lucky that those people saved you. I can't wait for you to heal, because I must go and find for Bayliss, who now has the key to the maze. To find me? Drink this extract to become a giant. The objects you are carrying will grow with you. I hope to see you again soon. Sincerely, Winona. <laughs> A giant is really handy. Here I am, close to a town. Oh. Yeah, so I think the plot goes off the rails just a little bit here. Blount is pursuing Winona, and she's apparently interested in him. Now we're giants walking across a countryside terrorized by a dragon. This knight seems to be hiding from it. Oh, oh, oh. And we got a patch of thorns in the way. Oh, oh, oh. So we'll need to get something to get rid of them. I've got all my old inventory back, but... We need a big rock to put on top of them. That's what we need. And there's also a smaller rock. That one's got some sculpture on it or something. That'll eventually be important, but for now, let's just crush these thorns with a big rock and talk to the knight. Find out what's going on in this country. He's scared of me because of my size! If only I knew his name! Good boy. Well, let's see. The knight was probably sent from this castle. So someone there might know him. But I can't talk to them from the ground. Yeah, so we got a mouse trap with a springy lever, and we know what that means. In Goblin's games, the springy lever always means a catapult that'll send your characters flying. And now that we're on the roof, we can talk to the king, but there's also a princess hiding under here. She begs me to help Knight Brayer throw in the thorns by the dragon. So now we know the knight's name, and let's talk to the king while we're up here. The local dragon has forgotten his promise and is destroying everything. We tried to give memorum to the dragon, but nothing seems to attract him. So there's the plot for this room, anyway. The local dragon has forgotten his promise and is destroying everything. Yeah, so the dragon promised to stop destroying stuff, and then forgot. And they have a potion that will make it remember, but they can't get him to drink it. So, here's the summary. And up in the upper right, they're talking about how the Memorum Potion will restore the lost memories. So we need to get our hands on that potion. And in the meantime, we can talk tonight Briar, or Briar as I always pronounced it. I thought it was a pun on thorns, but someone said it was a French legend of a knight, Bayard. Which makes sense. He tells me 
to try to make the dragon swallow this memorum. So we got the potion and Nightbrayer heads home. Meanwhile, we've got a house on fire there and a haystack next to it, which miraculously hasn't started to burn yet. It's cute, but we kind of need to put the fire out so we can get to this pitchfork. I can't get close! My hair is burning! Now, as everyone knows, when a haystack gets wet, all the hay sticks together and forms a kind of sponge. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's not true, which is why this was so difficult to figure out when I was a kid. But we have a sponge made of a haystack, and we can then squeeze it over the fire. Yeah, I do know water's not good for hay, but I didn't think that was the reason, or that that would all work. And we can finally use the pitchfork to pull the meat out of the dragon trap, since it's obviously not doing any good. Now note that you can do that before talking to the king and the princess. And if you do, Chump is not willing to jump on the trap when there's no meat to be had. You might think that this results in an impossible situation, but it doesn't. It's just a little bit trickier. What we need to do is have Chump stand on the lever. And Blount will quite happily launch him by using the hand. If I just click it on the mousetrap. So that gets Chump up onto the roof, and when he comes down from the roof, he actually activates the mechanism again. So that's how you can get Blount up there if you've already removed the meat from the trap. Naturally, there's no need to do that if you do things in the right order. So let's take a look into the dragon's den and see if we can figure out how to get it to swallow the memorum. Well, clearly not that way. Maybe he'd like some meat. Well, will he just drink the potion? No, he won't take it. I prefer to put the memorum in the water basin. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So if the dragon drinks out of the basin, he'll get the potion. Now we just gotta figure out how to make him drink. And unfortunately, we don't have the tools to do that here, so we're gonna have to go into the next room. And we're back to the Goblins 2 style, where you've got multiple connected rooms. and friends. My name is Pike Pick, the Mosquito. Oh, bad news. Your lovely friend, Winona, has taken a last ship from town. <laughs> if only you could fly like me. Being a giant is nice, too. Except that when you want to get back to your regular signs, you first become tiny. <laughs> tiny. None of that really makes any sense at all, but what it means is that in this room we're a lot smaller than everyone. And you might remember this guy from the opening movie. That's the captain who abandoned us on the airship. Of a captain apologizes for abandoning me on the ship. Well, that's nice. Can I get a refund? He won't fly again as long as it's raining stones. <laughs> Big bear, boom, big bear, boom, big, big, 
He could help me, but I first have to find a note he lost. Great, so I gotta do more favors for this guy. And I can't do anything with that fellow drinking coffee out of a straw on the left, but there's paprika up on the shelf. I chump to put the paprika on the bait for the dragon. Wait, why do I need to put paprika on the meat? Let me step back outside for a bit. There's something I want to try. So we can't just hold the meat up in front of the den for the dragon to eat it, but we can stick a fork in it. And we'll feed the dragon from a safe distance. Oh, oh. Oh. This meat is not tasty enough. We must spice it to attract the dragon. Okay, so that's why we need to put paprika on it. I'm glad we established that. So, let's go about actually getting the paprika on the meat. As Blount said, we'll need Chump's help. And that means launching him up to that shelf by means of the spoon. We'll just put it on this stone here and make a nice little catapult. So now we just get Chump to stand on it and launch him up. Well, that worked. We're gonna need to have something that we can throw onto the spoon. And we'll find it over on this side. There's this tiny door here. It's locked. And the mouse up in the cage, we can't reach him, but I suspect that hole is his home. Finally, we can slip through a crack in the wall and pop out on this tabletop, where there are a bunch of sugar cubes. As many as you need, but fortunately, if you do everything in the right order, you only need one. Somehow or other, this is the only thing that Blount will use as a counterweight for the catapult. And we got a stone that would work pretty well. But no, it has to be the sugar cube. So having done that, we'll go ahead and use Chump's help to spice the meat. By which I mean I'll take a step back, so that I can actually hold the meat in the stream of paprika. And now we can make the dragon sick. But there's one other person in the bar that I want to talk to first. He says that he doesn't need a leash since he lost his master. I don't really know what any of that means, but there's the leash. In the version that I played, what the customer said was simply that he likes sugar cubes. And that's about all the clue you get, that you need Chump to stand on his hand. And then we'll hand him a sugar cube, and he'll launch Chump up to grab the leash. Simple enough. I don't need the leash immediately. I'm gonna go deal with the dragon, and the leash is completely useless for that task. But there's something that I wanted to show you. 
See, the game hasn't really gone into the mechanics of all your inventory shrinking and growing as you do. It just sort of hinted that, yeah, that happens, and the leash is now a thong. That's really the only noticeable change in any of the inventory items. So let's go ahead and feed the dragon at last. He'll eat the spicy meat. That's not where the potion is, dragon! Yeah, we're gonna need to block that opening. So let's just stick the coin in it. Now that dragon's only got one source of water to drink from. He thanks me for having given him back his memory. Now he owes me. And yeah, we're gonna get to carry the dragon with us. And in the meantime, we need to get that coin back. We can't grab the fork or the meat, but the coin is our trusty companion and will be following us through the rest of the game. And now we need to find that captain's note, and the one person we haven't talked to here is the mouse. We're gonna need to get up to that cage. So let's see if we can climb the leash to get there. Now, we need to attach something to the cage for the leash to catch on. Like so. And finally, we're starting to get rid of some of our starting inventory. So with that done, we just need to climb up and have a chat with the mouse. The lost bill is at his place. He'll exchange his key for something else. Yeah, well, certainly he doesn't want us walking off with his key, so let's give him a coin to hold on to. And now we can get into his house and recover the lost note. Mm. Gotta click a bit more carefully to get to the inside of the house. It's too small for me. Only the dragon could go inside. Yep, the dragon was a lot smaller than me outside, so it's shrunk to my size. Thanks, dragon. He left without being restored to normal size. Well, so now there's a tiny dragon out there rampaging around the countryside. And I'm not sure if the blue ice up in the corner is a reference to the game of the same name. Because I don't remember there being anything in this game like blue ice. But, oh well. We've got the captain's note, so let's go ahead and find out what help he can finally offer us. He gave us a new note. It's a letter for his friend, the grocer, who knows a transport. Oh, okay, so now we just have to give the note to the grocer. Big 
His friend, the grocer, will provide me with a means of transport. So, alright, we've got our means of transport. Let's go on and head out into town and talk to the grocer. I'm not going to leave without getting my coin back. Oh, right, yeah, we, we need to give Othello his key back. I mean, admittedly, if he can get out of the cage, he could go and get the key himself. But we are going to need that coin, so let's get it back. And now we're ready to go. I won't leave without knowing if Corin, the pretty warrior, can help me. Yeah, he doesn't know how she's going to help him, but we do need her help. So, let's see if we can get it. Her name is Corin. She's a warrior with magical powers. All right. What magical powers? She will help me if I find a pretty stone to replace the jewel she lost. Well, I did find a pretty stone, and it's just about the right size now. She offers to let me look for Winona in her magic knob. She offers to let me look for Winona in her magic knob. Yeah, that probably sounds risque, but really she just means the handle of her sword. Yeah, you can try to stare into it before getting her help, but you actually do need to give her the stone before this will work. He doesn't want to give back the key to the maze that I got from father. So, we actually get to play as Winona here and see what happens when she tries to get the maze key back from Fort Bayless, who stole it before Blount died. But I think we've come far enough, so we'll pick up from here next time. See you then!